Hi everybody, uh, I'm here to make a short video for you guys on how to create and carry out um, some of your quantitative data for part three of our sociological methods research project. So at this point in the project, you should have already picked your topic, you should have selected your question, and you should have done some outside research to figure out how your issue affects people in the US, in Illinois, and in Lake County. For the next step of the project, you're going to be carrying out your own uh, qualitative and quantitative studies to uh, figure out how the issue affects our school. Now, this particular video is going to focus specifically on quantitative data. And I'm going to show you guys a really useful tool that you may or may not have used before that will help you collect that data. And that tool is Google Forms. So I'll show you really quickly how to use it. I'll show you how to send it. And I'll show you how to interpret the data that you get. So first of all, I want to remind you that as part of the project, you are required to um, talk to at least 50 or collect 50 quantitative responses per person. So again, if you have two people doing quantitative, each person needs to collect 50. Now, both partners can use the same survey, but each of you needs to get 50 different responses. So how can I create a survey? So one of the easiest things to do is to use Google Forms. So if you go onto your Google Drive and you click New, uh, under more, you'll see Google Forms, and I want to create a blank form, which looks something like this. So the first thing I want to do is title my form. So I would title it with something that has to do with your project. So for example, if my topic is hunger, I would say um, factors that influence hunger in teenagers, something like that. Okay. I then want to include a form description. So basically in that form description, I want to explain why this survey is given out and what people, or what we're going to use this information for. So I can explain that it's for a school project and that the data is going to be used to answer a sociological question, um, so on and so forth, right? So I can, I can write a bunch of stuff there to explain what they're gonna do it for. So, I want to remind you that quantitative data, you have more control as the researcher over what choices you give people. You want to provide them with options of answers. You don't want to give them an open-ended question. That is a qualitative thing. For quantitative, I want to be very specific. So let's say one thing I'm interested in is gender. Okay. So the nice thing about Google Forms is that it actually gives you choices of suggestions. Now, uh, before I, we get into that, as far as types of questions, if you click on this button here that says multiple choice, it gives you a, a wide variety of types of questions you can ask. For quantitative data specifically, the most useful ones are multiple choice, check boxes, and linear scale. So in this particular case, for gender, it's a multiple choice question. Now, Google Drive, I can click add all, and it's actually going to give choices here. And I can add other. In fact, I would recommend adding other for gender categories if you're choosing to do that. All right. So at the bottom here, this is actually a pretty important part. If I actually want people to make sure that they answer every question on my survey, I want to make sure that I require it. So there's a button at the bottom that says required. I click it. It turns purple. That means that when the person takes it, they have to answer it. So that's my first question. On the right here, I have a bunch of options of things that I can do. So the one that most of you are going to use is uh, the plus sign that says add question. Okay. And I'll do basically the same thing here. So let's say on my second question, I'm interested in some kind of linear scale. So I could say like on a scale, I guess it would help if I could type, on a scale of or from one to five, blah, blah, blah. I ask my question. And then it's going to give the people that answer the questions uh, a, a scale and they say like, oh, you know, you, you could do how many times you could do, um, you know, on a scale from one to five, how safe do you feel? I mean, there's all kinds of different things you could do. Again, I want to make that question required. So I'm going to keep going through that process until I have all of my questions on there. And um, I will tell you that quantitative research tools have a lot more questions on them than qualitative do because they don't take as long to answer. And again, you're giving them the choices of things that they can say. So I would recommend that your quantitative surveys have about 10, 10 to 15 questions, depending on what your topic is, to really start getting at that statistical data to help you answer your question. Now, I'm finished with my survey. Okay, I, You guys are going to have way more questions, but let's say I'm finished with my survey. I will then click send. OK, 
okay? When I click send, it's gonna give me a link button here, send via, and it's gonna give me this super long link here. This is the link that I wanna send to people, okay? I do not wanna send this one, because if I send this one and people click on that link, they're gonna have access to edit my form, and that's not what I want, okay? So I want this link right here. So if I copy that link, I'll just show you what this looks like. This is what the people taking your survey will see. All right, so, you know, mail, and then whatever, one to five, I click it, and they'll click submit. All right, once they do that, if you go back to your form that you created, under responses, it'll say, it'll keep a running tally of how many people have responded, right? So I can see um, the patterns in the data. Google Forms does a really cool job of giving you these, like, nice, colorful charts and graphs and things that show you uh, the patterns in your data. I can also click on this green box here and create a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet will keep track of all of the responses that are collected with a timestamp. I can sort columns and, and kind of look at patterns that way as well, which is why I think Google Forms is such a cool tool to use when you're doing qualitative, or sorry, excuse me, quantitative research. Now, one last uh, recommendation for you guys, actually two. If you click on this like gear at the top here, it's settings. I would recommend that you limit the responses to one per person. Because if you start letting people respond multiple times, it kind of messes with your, with your data. And then I would also, when you get your send link, if you're gonna actually like post this link somewhere, people aren't gonna wanna type in all these numbers. So you can, uh, if you copy the link, there's a website called tinyurl.com. And if I go to tinyurl.com, I can post my super long link and then actually create a custom alias. So like an ending to it. So it'd be tinyurl.com slash blah, blah, blah. So I would say like GCHS hunger survey 19. I can also use like underscores and dashes and things like that, but it'll make a tiny URL. Oh, I totally misspelled hunger, but that's okay. So I can uh, copy this link, and that's the link I can send out. It's easier for people to remember. It's easier for people to type in. I would just recommend you do that. Now, what might happen is that you type in a, an ending, and it's already taken, so then you have to go try it again until you get one that works. Okay? So this is just a little bit of an overview of how you can use Google Forms to collect quantitative data. Uh, I'm happy to help you as you go through this process, but hopefully this helps you at least get a start on